Hello, hello, shalo, and welcome back to another episode of Nellyville Reviews Drag Race. This is episode 6 of season 16. Let's just get right into it. First of all, let me just say, Tsunami every week is growing on me more and more. She She's letting down that guard. She's being more real. She's being more transparent. I really appreciate it. Okay, Tsunami, I see you. Also, in the top of the episode, we see that Plain is like in her nice girl congenial era, supposedly. And of course, that only lasted all of about two minutes. And baby, didn't nobody believe her. I don't even think she believed herself. But later on in the episode, we do find out why Plain is a little bit the way that she is, we get a little bit of backstory. That backstory being she speaks about her having a Russian background and her parents are immigrants. And you know, here in America, we, we sugarcoat things. In a lot of places where we sugarcoat, we give pleasantries, we, um, there, there is a over politeness uh, here that you kind of just don't get in that Russian culture, especially old school Russian culture. So, yes, is she a catty drag queen? Yes, but you pair that with some of the retage and the culture in the background, it makes a little more sense why she's a little more cutthroat. But still, girl, play nice. RuPaul and Churro enter the workroom and they tell the girls about the mini challenge that they're gonna have where they all have to do a Spanish fly girl like dance and they have partners and it's it's really cute. We love Churro. Um, it, it was it was it was cute. Now some of the girls could keep up. They had a little bit of rhythm, and then other girls, I was like, baby, don't break nothing. Don't hurt nobody. Don. <laughs> what in the I don't know what Don was doing. Um Don was being Don. And then here you go, Plasma almost fell down with her partner being extra. Look, if a dip is not planned then you might not want to just throw in a random dip on somebody. Like, I know this is female impersonation, but at the end of the day, you are a man. You are a big man. And even though your partner was also a man, but you can't just drop all that dead weight on somebody and think they're not going to tip over. Like, chill out. And then after all of the girls do their uh, mini challenge, of course, RuPaul gets out there with Churro and they start dancing and I just... I can't get enough of RuPaul dancing. It was so cute. Tsunami ended up winning the mini challenge. And I agree. Tsunami was really giving that 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 Hispanic flair. That was giving the ooh la la. And I'm like, okay. I, I, I agree. Then we move on to the maxi challenge. In the maxi challenge this week, the girls, the girls have to make an original outfit. And an outfit for their little doll to match. Oh. How cute. After announcing the Welcome to the Dollhouse Challenge, Rue also says that the guest judge is going to be La Roche. And I was kind of excited. I got really familiar with La Roche when I watched Legendary. Uh, La Roche has been a judge on Legendary. He was also a judge on one of the seasons on America's Next Top Model. But he's most known for being um, a celebrity stylist. He's really big in like the fashion world, obviously being a judge on America's Next Top Model and being a judge on Legendary, the voguing show. Um, you know, I knew Love was gonna give good TV. So I was excited when I found out, oh, okay, Love's gonna be, okay. Uh -oh. When the girls start to make their outfits, of course, they're going around asking each other for a little advice or asking for work. Cause you know, not all the girls are designers. But one thing that was kind of funny to me was when Plasma was asking Nymphia like for her opinion, like, what do you think girl? And Nymphia was just giving her, baby, if looks could kill. Nivia gave her no kind of advice. Nivia said nothing, but she gave her a look like, baby, I don't want to say nothing to hurt your feelings. And it, 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 it tickled me. It did. Of course, Plain Jane couldn't be nice for all of five minutes before she started shading Geneva. Look, Plain Jane's over here asking people for fabric. And then she's over here trying to throw people off their game, being shaded to Geneva. And it's just like, baby, what are you doing? And then speaking of girls who don't know how to sew, of course, we know Maya kind of struggles in the design challenges. She's, she doesn't know how to sew. Uh, and Safira steps up to the plate and helps Maya. But Safira is basically constructing 
the outfit, which is interesting if I could fast forward to the end of the episode. So Maya ends up getting critiqued at the end of the episode. And they're asking her, oh, what did you do? And did anybody help you? And she was just kind of like, well, Severa did like this itty bitty thing, but like, yeah, I made it. Girl, like why, like why lie? And Safira, look, I love a queen that helps another queen. I understand that you, you in there mothering the girls and stuff, but don't, don't pull a Ajo O'Hara where you, you're so busy helping other people that you slip and, and don't work on your own look. Worry about yourself first. And then if you got a little extra time, then you can run around and, 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 pet and play Mother Queen. You know what I'm saying? Once again, Nymphia is still getting on my nerves this week. Do I remember what she did? No, my note just says Nymphia girl, please. And I do remember being annoyed with her, but I don't know what my note was talking about. I just use your imagination. You know, I, I love some dolls. So watching the girls make the dolls and, and put the little clothes and stuff on, they really... It really tickled me. It it, it really did. I, I really enjoyed this challenge and watching them run around the night, the run around the workroom and trying to put the little clothes together, picking out the little wigs and stuff, and the little wigs falling off. Like it really got me together. Then I see Sophia starting to make this opera style coat, and I was getting a little worried. She seemed a little shaky. Normally, Sophia is very confident, and. Um, she, she was, I was nervous. Then I look over at Plasma Station and I'm like, Plasma baby, what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Plasma. Then you go on over to Geneva. She's struggling too, which. And then this is the moment that I realize are three girls about to use the same fabric. So Plasma picks this fabric, right? And then Plain Jane weasels her way over and steals some of that fabric. And then I noticed that Geneva has picked the same fabric. So I don't know who was first, who was second, who was like, I don't know. But what we're not going to do is, baby, if I see another girl with my fabric... Somebody got to change fabrics because somebody's outfit is going to look better and I'd be daggone. And we have the same fabric. It's, that's, it's already too much competition. Then we got the same fabric. And then damn, what if yours looks way better than mine? Plain Jane ends up looking better than all three of them, of course. And it's just like, all that fabric. Y'all pick the same th child. Anyways, a cute moment was when Don told the story about how her mom would take her to take Don to the store and Don was to you know, afraid, you know, as a, as a little boy was kind of, you know, shy about going down the doll aisle. So Don's mom would go pick out a few dolls from the aisle and then bring them to Don and, to pick out which one. And I, I thought that that was a cute little sweet story. And then Plasma tells the story about how he dressed up as Dorothy for one Halloween when he was like three or something. And his mom packed his little Dorothy slippers uh, from the Halloween costume in, in the suitcase. And I guess he didn't know. And I guess he found them when he was unpacking. I just, I thought that it was cute. On a sadder side, um, Plain Jane had dolls. But of course, you know, going back to that Russian background, uh, his dad would take the dolls and one day, he, I think he said he came home from school and dad had took all the dolls away and replaced it all with like trucks and fire trucks and stuff. And it's just like, <sighs> like you get it, but it's still sad, you know? And then here goes plain Jane again, being shady, talking about Sephira might have to use her immunity. Girl, did nobody ask? Why you, why you sprinkling? And then it got kind of sad again because Q talked about how he grew up very, very poor to the point where there were times where he didn't have lunch money even to for, for school. And instead of going to the lunchroom where people could see that he couldn't eat, he would go to his theater uh, and, you know, work on his costumes and read over his lines. And I mean, you look, all that extra 
creativity and uh, all that extra practice and investment in the creativity obviously it paid off in the end. But, you know, it's just, I, I do like that. I like when the queens share these stories because I know somebody's going to hear it. These young people are going to hear it. It's going to give them hope. It's going to make them feel like, okay, if y'all know what I mean. But on the plus side, even though Q grew up, you know, with not with the most money, um, he said that he has a really supportive mom. And well, you know, a parent's love can really make all the difference, can't it? So now it's time for the runway, AKA the Maxi Challenge. And let's get right into it. Before we do all of that, Rue. I mean, Rue looks good every week, but I really, okay, Rue, I was like, you okay, I see you. So let's get right into the looks of the queens and their dolls. So when they walk down the runway, they do like a voiceover explaining like the theme of themselves and the doll. And it was like really cute or whatever. So the first queen up, we have Tsunami. Okay, look, the look was decent. Um... <laughs> Maybe if she had a boob, it needed a boob. And, you know, I was not crazy about the hair. Not crazy about the hair. The The presentation and the delivery were well done. Um, but the but the doll wig was slipping back. I don't know if that was on purpose or what. But, you know, shout out to my big forehead queens. Next, we have Safira. Um, I wasn't feeling the voiceover it she was doing a really weird voice it didn't say doll to me it was weird the dress was pretty um it was a little safe but it was pretty but the walk was stiff i don't know if she couldn't move or what was going on and once again i, I hope that she watches this and, and decides to invest in a new booby bib next up we have plasma girl plasma i couldn't even focus on the look because you kept fixing the scarf let it fall lean into it okay go with the flow we can't focus on your outfit if you keep trying to fit. just when it fell it didn't look bad so you had to know that this you trying to fix it looked weird just lean into it the delivery was fine. The look was okay. Then we have plain Jane. She was another one whose doll's wig was was slipping. Make it make sense. This look was good. It, it, it gave me Denali. Y'all know the Queen Denali. It, it was very Denali coded. It, but the, uh, I like the outfit. But the only thing that I probably would have changed was the, the train on the back. It kind of like toilet paper. I feel like the train, that little train part was an afterthought. We could have did without that. Then we have Nymphia. Um, it, it, I, I think I like the doll look more. I, I think I like the doll more. The doll was all that. Morphine. I didn't understand what was wrong with the doll's makeup. Also, why did Morphine have a black tooth? I didn't, I didn't understand. The garment itself was really pretty, but I, I was a little confused about the, the makeup on the doll was just very busted. Um, and so was the doll's hair. I don't know what was going on with that doll. But but Morphine looked pretty cute. Then we have Maya. Girl. I mean, look. For somebody who doesn't know how to sew, fine. But also, Safira did a whole lot of your work, so... I don't know. Maybe the style, it, like, the, the, I don't know, girl. I don't know. Then we have Megami. I loved Megami. I thought Megami was gonna be in the top. I I love this this. I think this is my favorite look from Megami the whole season. I loved it. Construction was great. The hair, the makeup, the concept. Like I I loved the little doll. It was great. Everything. Yes. Then we have Geneva. Um. I didn't hate the look as much as the judges did. The judges tore her apart. I didn't think it was that bad. They really especially hated the shoes, but I liked her shoes. But, I mean, like, who am I? Um, and I thought the little doll was cute. I don't know, but the, 
I mean, when the judges pointed out some things, I was kind of like, well, I guess. But I didn't hate it as much as them. But, whew, Lord, have mercy. Dawn. Now we have Dawn. It was a good look, I guess. But it it just wasn't my style. It didn't speak to me. The judges really, really loved it, especially La Roche. Um, which obviously, obviously La Roche has a lot more fashion references than I do. Um... And then, of course, you know, every, everybody has different opinions, you know. I, I could see why they were, why people liked it, but it just wasn't, it, it didn't do it for me personally. And last but not least, we have Q. Q had a strong package. And what made Q stand out even more, she used a very different color palette than most of the girls. Most of the girls, if not the same fabric, hello, they had a lot of the same colors. So Q was, was really strong, the doll and her, which it was a design challenge. We knew Q was going to be great. Also, a lot of people were wearing the same type of hair. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I feel like they were. Also, did anybody else notice that uh, La Roche's makeup? was like a little off. I don't know if it was like the lighting or something. Look, La Roche looked great, but it was something, something was off with the makeup. So when it comes to the part where Rue asks the two girls with immunity, being Safira and Plain Jane, if they want to use it for this week, Safira said, yes, she wanted to use hers. Now, Plain Jane still has her immunity, which means she's the one and only girl to have it. The the judges were pretty shocked that she wanted to use it this week. And Safira said that immediately after she said she wanted to use it, she regretted her decision to do so. She let her inner saboteur take over and she just got down on herself when she shouldn't have. Would she have won this week? Probably not. But I think, I think she would have been safe and... Um, I don't know, you used it and it's gone now, so. In good news though, Q finally won a challenge. Q, Q, poor Q, was in the top three and then was in the bottom and then here we come back for the win. So congratulations to Q on winning the whole thing. I think it was well deserved um, and finally, because it was some other wins that maybe you should have got the other people got the you will well whatever well, congratulations Q and everyone was so happy for Q which was really exciting that leaves Geneva and Maya in the bottom two Geneva has been in the bottom two a thousand times at this point and this is Maya's first time in the bottom so it was already pretty clear who was going to go home considering Geneva had been in the bottom multiple times and this was Maya's first time. So unless Maya completely bombed the lip sync, baby, it was time for Geneva to go. The song that they lip synced to was Janet Control. Uh, uh, Y'all know that song. But anyway, so Control by Janet. And, which, which is a great lip sync song. It's just a great song in general. And of course, the flipping queen, Maya, won. So the gag is when Geneva is sent home, she has these these elaborate exit lines in this, this whole production. And I'm like, girl, if you would have put as much time in the competition as you did in, in this exit package, you know, maybe you wouldn't have been in the bottom so much. I mean, I know you want to go, everyone wants to go out with like a bang or with like a memory, especially when you have people like Miss Vanjie who really left a mark. People like Alyssa Edwards who had these great catchphrases and, or, or sugar, you know what I'm saying? It, it, like you have queens that left and you're like, ha that was funny. I remember that, but baby, look. If you're planning an exit line, what are you doing? Like, I get it. You don't want to just leave and not say anything. And <sighs> But I feel like if you plan an exit line, I just feel like you're speaking into existence that you're not going to win the competition. But, you know, I could also understand being prepared. You don't want to leave and 
Not everyone can think of something on the spot, yeah? So that is all that I have for you today, Geneva. It was a pleasure having you. And um, what am I talking about? Like I, like I personally, like I have anything to do with World of One or RuPaul. But no, Geneva, um, can't wait to see more from you. I'm sure you you are going to learn a lot. You're going to take from this experience and blow up anymore. Congratulations to you representing uh, uh, the the Mexicano community, representing Brownsville, Texas, representing the South, representing Dreamers. You represent so much, and you you did you did good. You did good on the show. Uh, you, maybe you didn't want to. You maybe you didn't make it as far as you wanted to, but you certainly left a staple. And we will see more from you. Maybe an Oswald or something. Um and. Congratulations to Q once again. So finally got that win. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next week. I'm ready for Snatch Game. Can we get to the Snatch Game, y'all? <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye. Oh, bye.